Hi guys and welcome to my video. Uh, in this video I've been designing a bed. Uh, I've actually used this bed now for about two years uh, so it does actually work. Uh, I've tried to design it so um, that you can make it from uh, easy attainable materials uh, and also you can design um, the joint so you don't need a lot of tools because at the minute I've not got a lot of wood, woodworking tools, so I tried to keep it as simple as possible. But at the same time, I want it to try and be uh, as strong as possible because um, I like the divan beds, but uh, they're not really as strong uh, as I'd like. Although they've got a deep section, uh, they're not made very strong inside. They usually got like stapled wooden bits and things like this on. They're not screwed together properly uh, and they don't tend to last a very long time. So I wanted something a bit stronger, uh, something that's going to last a bit better, uh, but also easy to make, uh, easy to design, easy to make with not many tools. So this is what I've come up with. Uh, I've actually made it and we've been using it now for two years uh, without any issues whatsoever. Uh, it's very, very solid, very, very strong, and I think it's going to last us a long time. So basically, uh, I've tried to keep the joint here as simple as possible. Uh, this component goes in to the leg. Um, so let's just have a look down on top of it. So we can see here. The, the leg is actually holding this beam and it's actually holding the end beam as well. So the load's going from this item into this item and from this item into this item. Um, we've got a series of bolts. So we've got two bolts here. These two bolts are pulling this item to this item. We've also got two bolts here. These two bolts here are pulling this item to this item. Uh, if you see on the inside, we've got some uh, lock nuts. They're actually nylon lock nuts. Uh, a couple of washers. And on the outside, a couple of washers. Uh, at this location, uh, I've put in some barrel nuts. So we've got a couple of barrel nuts here and here. So it's just a simple hole drilled through with the barrel nut in. And the two outer screws pull this piece of wood into this piece of wood. And I've also got a screw here going from the outside wood to this piece of wood. Uh, and that's secure with a, a barrel nut as well. So it's quite a simple arrangement. Um, try and just see that. So there's the hole there for the barrel nut that's in there for this bolt that comes through. I've tried to keep all the bolts the same length, all 100 millimeters. Um, that seems to work quite well. So it's the same bolts all round. I've not put all the bolts in all the locations, just on one leg. Also, we've got the central leg to look in underneath. There's three holes here, and the same bolts are used through here as well. There's three bolts which hold this item to this item. Um, basically, the central leg, uh, if we look at the side view, the actual central leg is actually fractionally higher than the four outer legs. Obviously, it's better from this view. So if you can see there, uh, the central leg is actually higher than the floor by 10 millimeters. This gives a little bit of flex um, in the center. So when you sit in the center, this actually then comes down a fraction and bottoms out. And basically what it does, it allows you to pull the bed around without trying to bend the central leg. Um, and it gives just that little bit of flex. So it's not absolutely solid when you lay on it. It is quite solid. And I think, um, this bed would be actually be suitable for uh, someone who's really heavy. I'm actually quite heavy myself, um, and it's worked quite well so far. We've got full length slats, which run from here to here. Uh, we've got the central uh, beam that supports the slats. So basically what I've done, uh, I've run the slats across first, and then I put this beam and pushed it up against all the slats. Uh, and then I put the joist hangers on, making sure the joist hangers bottom out and then um, basically put the screws in to this item from the joist hanger and in the sides to the uh, central beam as well. And it's very, very solid design. Uh, it's worked very well. It's quite cheap to make uh, and we've actually painted, actually painted these items. I actually used um, spray cans to do the job, uh, but I think if I came to do this again, I'd buy a proper spray gun. I think the spray guns coat the surface a lot better, a lot thicker. The spray guns tend to be uh, quite expensive for what they are, and you don't get a lot of paint out of them. 
Right, so if I go into some of the components, uh, the sizes and everything you need, I've done a quick drawing of some of these items. So if you wanted to reproduce this bed, you could. It's a Super King uh, size, so it's a little bit bigger than your normal bed. But um, once you've had a Super King, I think there's no going back. Right, so if I show you the actual drawing. So this is, um, this is the drawing. So the mattress that fits on it, um, our mattress was 1.8 meters by two meters. So 1.8 meters wide by two meters long. And actually measured it and it was pretty close to them sizes. Um, so I actually made it the actual frame size uh, between 20 and 25 millimeters uh, larger uh, in the dimension. So in one direction, it's 20, 25 millimeters longer. Uh, and in the other direction, it's the same. That gives it a little bit of clearance. When you sit on the bed, it tends to uh, come out a fraction at the bottom and it tends to touch the sides then, or just about. It seems to be about right, this uh, this gap. Um, with the size of bolts we've got here, putting it all together, it's not gonna go anywhere anyway. Uh, they're actually M10 bolts uh, going through. Basically what I've done is I've designed the height of the bed. It's a little bit higher than what I'd normally um, do a bed. Um, but the reason why is I wanted to fit some storage underneath. I didn't want to design the bed with the storage and pay for the extra wood. The wood cost can be quite high. So I wanted to design it around something I could just buy. Um, and basically these are standard IKEA storage boxes. Uh, and the size of this beam uh, is so that you can just get the boxes in. Uh, and I've got two boxes this side and two boxes the other side. These are some of the components you're going to need. You can obviously play this video back and pause it uh, to look at some of these items in more detail. But we've got some M10 barrel nuts, uh, 12 off. We've got some M10 nylock nuts, 11 off. Some M10 thin washers, 31 off. Some five millimeter diameter wood screws by 75 long, 20 off. Uh, and then we've got some 3.5 diameter wood screws by 30 long, 32 off. Uh, but that will depend on the exact joist hanger that you buy. Uh, some some of them are slightly different. Uh, the important thing is a particular size on the joist hanger, and I'm going to show you what that is. Right, so that's page one. Let's go on to page two. Right, page two, we've just got a view from underside. Just a 3D view. Uh, basically, we've got the four outer legs. There's actually um, two off left hand and two off right hand. So the holes need to be drilled on on one of the legs on the left hand side and on the on the other two legs on the right hand side. That's the only difference. So we've got a 47 by 67 joist hanger here, at this location which holds the main beam and the same on the other side. And as, as I said before, there's a 10 millimeter clearance to the floor uh, with the uh, central leg. All right, let's go on sheet three. Right, so sheet three, um, I've actually got some hardboard that covers the slats. There's one piece of hardboard comes here and one piece of hardboard comes here. If you can get a piece of hardboard big enough to cover the whole lot, you could do that. Uh, or you could not bother with the hardboard. Basically the hardboard uh, is only five millimeters thick and it goes across here. And what the hardboard does, it stops the bed from going in between the slats. So on our particular mattress, we turn it over now and again. Uh, and the hardboard stops the bumps that you'll get potentially in between. However, these slats are quite close together, so it probably wouldn't be an issue most of the time. Uh, if you've got a mattress with like a topper on it and you can't turn it over, then you probably don't want to bother with the hardboard. Uh, if you want to keep turning the mattress over, it might be a good idea to put the hardboard in. It won't hurt. The slats have actually got a nominal seven millimeter clearance to the uh, the beams at either side, and the slats sit on a 38 millimeter um, piece of wood underneath, if you like, the the, uh, the distance. So it's got plenty of engagement on each side. It's a solid slat. There's uh, 10 off slats, but the, the top and bottom slat have got a little cut out in. None of the rest of the slats have. The overall length of the bed we're looking at just over 2.1 meters by two meters. All 
the bed's actually quite high. Um, I modeled it around the mattress that we've got and the mattress we've got is just over 300 millimeters uh, thick. So it's quite a thick mattress. Um, I think if you've got a mattress on, on this particular bed, anything over about 135 would be about right. You know, 150 would be perfect. Uh, I think you'd want the mattress to just go over the leg a fraction or you'd have to cut the leg probably down a fraction um, if you wanted to use you know, a thinner mattress than 134. These uh, dimensions in brackets are just reference dimensions. Uh, they're not things where we make them to, they're just there for a reference. This is showing you the fact that we've got a 10 millimeter gap between the floor and the central leg, nominally. Uh, and then these sections that are cut through here are trying to show you how the bolts uh, are connecting, connecting this item to this item at this location and at this location. There's also one cut through here. So this one we're using a barrel nut on the other side. You've got a barrel nut here and here. So we've got sections through them as well, just to show you what it looks like. The actual hardboard sits under here, uh, goes across the slats, and it's normally five millimeters thick. Right, so if we go to the sections, we've got some bolts. Um, Normally in a section you wouldn't show the bolts as being sectioned, you'd show them as being solid. Uh, same with the uh, the nuts and the washers. However, I've left them as sectioned just to show you how long they are uh, at this location. So they're all 100 millimeter long bolts. And we've got a thin washer this side and a thin washer this side. And what tends to happen is, as um, after you've built this, um, this washer will be sitting directly on this face, um, but over time, the washer will get pulled into the face slightly. Um, so basically what you wanna allow for is a little bit of a, a movement here for the end of the stud to come through, the end of the bolt to come through. And what happens is when this gets pulled in a fraction, it gets pulled in a fraction either side after the first couple of weeks. So after the first couple of weeks, you'll go around and tighten these up and then they'll be solid and you won't need to touch them after that. Um, what will happen is this will come slightly further in uh, and it's pretty much ideal. You don't want this really sticking outside of this nut uh, because you'll have like sharp edges. Right, so I've chose to use the nylock nuts um, so they don't come loose at all and that's proven to be um, quite good so far. And they're all M10 bolts. Most of the bolts, washers and nuts I got from Screwfix. And the same with the barrel nuts. I think I got them from screw fix as well. Uh, and obviously the barrel nuts goes into the hole. Let me just uh, update that. There we go. The barrel nut goes into the hole and then the screw goes into the barrel nut and pulls back against the hole. And likewise at this location, it goes into the barrel nut. It's, it's a very, very strong joint this is. And most of the load is actually uh, sitting on the frame uh, going directly into the outside feet and into the central foot. Uh, it's a very, very strong joint. It's probably not quite as good as um, uh, sort of a tenon and mortars, mortar joint, but um, it's a lot easier to make and it's probably stronger. Right, so we're going to the detail of some of the components. So we've got the leg, the actual leg. We've got um, two parts left hand and two parts right hand. And this is the detail for the leg. So the leg, the outer legs are actually made, uh, they're 140 by 70, but it's actually made from 6 by 3 inch. <clears throat> the exact size on this aren't, aren't important. Um, so I bought 6 by 3 uh, planed wood. And that's what it's come out at, 140 by 70. So then I put this cutout in. Uh, the cutout's 146 by this 390 high by 26 wide. And then these holes here are put in and they're four by down to 10. So there's four holes down to 10 at these dimensions. Again, this is just a reference. So ideally what you want to do is put the cutout in first, 
measure up from the cutout this distance and then put these holes in and again it's not critical because what you'll do is you'll use uh, you'll drill all the holes in the outer legs first and then um, clamp it all together and then drill through these holes into the next component when it's all lined up right so we've got uh, the two off side beams and these side beams are doing a lot of the work uh, I've actually shown it with this component on at the same time. So we've got this item here and we've got this item here. Again, this will be made from 6x2, this item, and it's just uh, planed. So 6x2 planed, and the smaller item would have been 2 inch by 2 inch planed, and it's come out a bit smaller. So we've got 145 by 45 for the big item, and I think on the other end, I forgot the dimensions of the small item, which is about 45 by 45. So this 45 um, size or line here is where all the slats are going to sit on. So this particular item is bonded to this item. Um, so yeah, we've, we're going to bond this item to this item. And then we're going to use 10 off 5mm diameter screws by 75 along. And the screws go in at these locations. Uh, and you want to use countersunk screws. So you'll just put them into the hole and keep going until it's flush. And we've got 10 by down to five. So there'll be a clearance uh, in this or pretty much size on size. Uh, and then it will screw into the thicker piece and that will keep it together. And basically what happens is the slats sit on this component in these locations and the screws for the slats go either side of these screws here when you fitted it. So here you've got the lengths uh, of the beams, the, the uh, outer beam is 2020 long uh, and these are giving you the locations for all the holes. We've got some holes here, uh, 23 in, uh, and we've got a hole at this location, at this size. Uh, this, these down to 16 holes are for the, uh, the barrel nuts and these down to 10 holes are for the screws. So basically we've got, looking on the end face of this beam, it looks like this in section. Uh, and then we've got this hole uh, which you drill uh, at these locations. And this goes through into this bigger hole. So the bolt basically comes through here and you've got your uh, barrel nut which fits in there. And your other beam sits on here and the bolt pulls the two together. So yeah, so you need two of these assemblies with, with all these dimensions being the right sizes. Uh, we've got here, these outer holes, I've said uh, down to 10, drill on assembly. So what you'll do is you'll put the leg, uh, this item to the leg, align the outer faces up and then drill through the leg to make sure they all line up properly. And you've got the two end beams. Uh, these are the sizes for the end beam. And we've got the, uh, the four holes down to 16. Uh, these are for the barrel nuts. Uh, and then we've got these holes here, that one and that one, which are down to 10, which are for the screws. Again, here you want to do the same, uh, same thing. You basically put this beam and this beam together with all the feet. You want to clamp them together, uh, align the end faces and then drill through the, the legs and into these components to make sure it all lines up properly. Again, this should be um, standard off the shelf, uh, planed material, and it ends up being about 145 by 45 by this length. Then we've got the slats. So these are the, um, the, the 10 off slats that we need. Um, so we're really, uh, this cutout only wants to be in the end two slats. Uh, so don't put this cut out in uh, the eight off the other eight off slats. They'll just be straight through. So you can drill these holes through. Um, so you basically pilot them. You'll put this uh, line this beam up so it's in the right place, uh, and then drill through the holes and put the screws through. And these are the size of the screws. The thickness of these beams. I think it started off at an inch, uh, and then it's been planed and provided uh, at this size. So it actually came in about 21 millimeters thick. 
the reality is if these were anywhere between 20 and 25 thick they should be okay so they're the uh, they're the sizes for the slats obviously you can pause this and uh, rewind it if you if you missed any dimensions and things I've just put a comment here that uh, really what you want to do is round all the sharp edges um, more for safety and splinters and things but uh, especially on components that you're going to paint so uh, the slats I didn't bother painting because uh, you can't see them but the these beams this so these beams and these beams and the legs I painted all of these uh, so they were spray painted obviously you can paint them whatever color you want uh, but you're better off to radius all the edges um, the paint will have less chance of flaking off then at the corners and obviously you really want to um, uh, prime it first okay then we've got sheet five so we've got sheet five so this is showing the uh, the middle beam the strengthening beam that runs down the middle of the bed uh, and it's 2019 long and these are all the dimensions that you need uh, all the cutouts you need all these cutouts are for the slats and if you look this end slats only 90 it's not 100 which is why you need the 10 mil uh, cutout in the slat at this location and the other end as well again these radiuses don't need to be exact it's only so you've not got a sharp um, a sharp corner where this beam uh, this edge meets this edge you just want to try and radius that corner a little bit there uh, with giving it enough space to get the, um, the joist hanger in again this should be off the shelf sizes 145 uh, by 45 thick and that 48 mil is to the intersection of them two lines we've got some holes here three holes uh, but they would these would these holes would be drilled on assembly so basically what you want to do is you want to create this item first which is the central leg to the dimensions that are here and basically what you want to do is put the central leg push this central leg up to this location here so you push this item up you've already drilled these holes in the leg which are all through holes uh, and then you drill through the leg and through this item so then you can't go wrong with the hole sizes and then you can remove this item and you can just open out these holes a fraction to, by, by half a millimeter just make sure that that item is bottomed out on this surface before you drill the holes because you want the load to go through uh, this item at this face touching this face you don't really want the bolts to be taking all the load so it wants to go through the face of the item uh, and it's one of the reasons why I've just opened these holes out by half a millimeter so it's just a fraction So this is the um, the middle leg, and these are the sizes we've got. So it's 95 by 70. Again, this was uh, plain wood, uh, just supplied at these sizes. And then I've just cut the length and put this cutout in it. So it's a 46 millimeter cutout, um, and this item is 45. So there's a millimeter clearance. You can uh, make that a little bit tighter if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. I think one of the important things here is I'd put the uh, the cutout in first before drilling the holes. So I put the cutout in first and then you want to measure from the bottom face up to the bottom hole here at 20 millimeters and put these two holes in. Uh, I think it's better to do it that way around uh, and then go from the bottom face up to the top hole which is 45 millimeters and all these holes are cut straight through. And we use the same 100 millimeter bolt it goes through this component it goes through this component and you put a nut on the other end so there are all the dimensions that you'd need on there we've got the two off hardboard pieces to cover the slats uh, if you need them um, I couldn't get a piece of hardboard at the time the right size so I used two pieces cut to these sizes so it was 87.5 and 87.5 by 1900 uh, and when I pushed them together I had a 40 mil gap in the middle where the main beam was and it was five millimeters thick and that worked quite well 
the IKEA storage boxes, you should be able to buy them straight from IKEA. Um, but the rough sizes are here uh, of the actual unit itself. So it's actually 420 high by 770 wide. And the joist hangers, um, basically they're, they're steel or stainless steel that you want to be getting. Approximately a millimetre or a millimetre and a half thick. Uh, and the important size is the 47. So the 47 allows the 45 millimetre beam to go in. And you can then put screws through at this location. And you can put the screws through here to hold it back to the bed, which will then support the, uh, the centre of the bed. So that's the, uh, the CAD side of it. Now I'm going to show you some pictures of the actual bed itself.